In this demonstration, we're going to calibrate a Max monitor by running VMware Fusion and Windows and Calman all on the same machine. This would be if you don't have a Windows machine, you have Calman running in VMware and you want to calibrate the machine that is your calibration machine, whether it be your workstation or a laptop. So for this, we're going to set up our calibration. We're going to select this computer, Mac, single monitor, then hit next. Now we're going to connect to our pattern source, which is client 3, that we've already installed and have running on the Mac side of our computer. We're going to connect. Now we're connected, we can see right here. Now we're going to connect to client 3 again, but this time as a display, which is going to act as our calibration profile manager. Okay, now that we're connected to both the display profiler and the pattern generator of client 3 that's running on the Mac side of our machine, I'm going to go to next. And now we're going to search for our meter, which I've already connected to the Mac and connected to VMware. I'm going to hit search. want to make sure we have the right meter profile selected. This particular machine is a laptop. It has a white LED backlight. Most laptops made within the last five years or so, most all of them have white LED as the backlight type. A few high-end workstations might have GB-R or blue-green LED backlights, but that's a very, very small minority. If you're unsure which display type you have, you can email us on our support email, which is support at spectracal.com, and we can help you out with figuring out what the display type you're calibrating. So since we are calibrating the same machine that we're running Calman and VMware on, we need to shrink it enough so we have room next to it where we can put our meter and the patterns can come through. So now that we've done that, we've placed our meter in this area. We can go to next. This page is where we set our calibration target. Since this is a computer, most likely you want to be calibrating to sRGB, which we have selected, and a D65 white point, which is the white point for sRGB. Now we will go to our pre-calibration capture where we're going to take measurements of what the display is doing out of the box before it's been calibrated. And then we will have this data at the end to compare to our post-calibration results so you can get a nice before and after graphs of, of what we did during the calibration. So now we hit the read series button and it will take about a minute or two to read through this and we'll come back after it's done. Okay, now we've completed our pre-calibration measurements. So we're going to go to the next page, which checks our dynamic range. Now since this is a laptop monitor, we do not have a contrast control. So even if our dynamic range is slightly clipped, we don't have a control to fix it. What this is showing us, there's no clipping. Essentially, if there was, we would see one of the red or blue or green lines, the green is really low here, so it's off the charts. But you would see it plateau off. It would kind of follow this yellow line as which our target, and it kind of comes up like this, and then it would plateau off. That would be a sign of clipping. We're not really seeing that. Um, it doesn't matter that these red, green, and blue lines aren't together right now, because that is fixed in a, a step further down the line. So we will go to next. And this page is another one of the things that if you have a display, an external display that has an RGB balance control, you would use this page to do that. But laptops don't have that type of control. This page does not apply to us because we're calibrating the built-in screen of the laptop. We can, however, set the luminance. So currently the backlight is all the way up. For a um, room that has office lighting, you want it you know, around 35 to 45 foot Lamberts or around 150 nits. Right now we're at 97, so we can stick it in read continuous mode and I can reduce the backlight until we get around 45 foot Lamberts. This is the part where we auto cal our grayscale and create a 1D lookup table that is loaded into the graphics card of the machine itself, also called a gamma table. This is going to correct the gamma, grayscale, and white point all at the same time. So completely automated process, it takes a few minutes, but you just hit the AutoCal button and hit OK, and it's going to run through its automatic process, so we'll be back after it's done. 
Okay, now our calibration of the gamma table is complete. Now we're gonna go to next. Okay, now we're gonna recheck our luminance because sometimes it gets reduced when you calibrate uh, the 1D ramp. So I'm gonna bump our backlight back up until it, it's at 45. Let's go down one, measure it. Let's go. I'd rather have it slightly too bright than slightly too dim. So I'm gonna go for 50 foot Lambert. Okay, so next we create our ICC profile. Essentially this characterizes the display and the operating system on the Mac is ICC aware at the OS level it does its color transforms based upon what the color space of, of the content was so everything looks correct. And this is much more accurate because this is the actual measurement based ICC profile versus the ones that are built in when you get a monitor or come with the operating system, a generic say sRGB one. This one is based on actual measurements of your monitor. So those color transforms that the operating system does are much more accurate. And we'll come back after it's done. Okay, our ICC profile has been created and it's been loaded into Client 3 by Calman. The next step is to do our post-calibration measurements. The pre-calibration ones have already been populated by the data that we took earlier when we did our pre-calibration measurements. Now we will do a read series to see what our post-calibration results are. This is going to take a minute or two, so we'll be back after it's done taking all the measurements. Okay, now our post-calibration measurements are done. Our grayscale is very, very good. It's a delta E of 0.96. Our color checker is at three because the primaries of this display are undersaturated. The red, the blue should be right here, the red should be right there, and the green should be in that box. That is just the physics of the display. This display cannot hit sRGB, but we were able to improve the accuracy of it by fixing the grayscale and gamma, and by telling the operating system via an ICC profile what these primaries are, and then it can properly transform the ones in the middle. So essentially anything outside of the primaries or at the primaries will be incorrect, but anything in the middle will be properly transformed, where most content is actually in the middle. You don't get a lot of fully saturated colors. So this is still made a big improvement in the color gamut. The next page is our visual verification page where we can see using our color comparator what the difference is. This is the actual measurement of the post calibration. These are the target colors. This is the target of the pre and this is the measurements. You can see it was very, very blue to start out with. And this, this right here is the color gamut. You can cycle through and see how visible some of the errors are. So you really in here the, the errors are, are pretty accurate until you get to the fully saturated colors. That's when it goes off the rails because, like I said, the fully saturated red, green, and blue are undersaturated, so we can't fix that. It's just inherent in, in the performance of the display. If you had a, another monitor, you could, when you connected everything, you would select the second monitor in here. It would show up as a different name. The color LCD name is referring to the built-in monitor. You could start the whole process over to calibrate the secondary monitor, put CalMan on the main monitor, move your meter to the secondary monitor, and then you would have two calibrated monitors. And that's how you would do multiple monitors with this setup.